Welcome to Radio Arizona RV. On this episode, I'm going to be talking about cleaning your RV's rubber roof. By the way, when I use the term rubber roof, I'm talking about the EPDM rubber or the TPO. The methods are basically the same. There's some maintenance things you need to know. We'll discuss that later on. But overall, for cleaning, you can follow these same instructions. Now, it's best to clean your roof um, at least twice a year. Well, that's what DICOR recommends. You know, you're probably better off cleaning it three or four times a year at least to keep it clean and to uh, stop future problems. And, and just, well, you're washing your RV, clean the roof. You know, you can see problems more more easily. Things will stand out. You're up on the roof a little more frequently. So you can kind of stay ahead of the maintenance curve if you do that. You know, and cleaning your roof also stops permanent stains or it can reduce it from, you know, different things like mold and mildew that can grow on your roof. In some areas, it's pretty common. You know, I've seen rubber roofs where it looks like a jungle. There's mold and mildew growing on the air conditioner, the vents, you know, all over the roof, the awnings, inside the awnings, outside the awnings. You get bird droppings, things from trees, sap, leaves, you know, berries. There's all sorts of things that can be going on in your roof that you want to stay on top of. And cleaning it is probably, oh, it's fairly simple, especially if you're washing your RV at the same time. That's what I recommend is just do it all at once. It's, it's more work. But that way, anything that runs down the side of the RV, you know, you're you're going to be washing it anyways. And your RV is probably dirty at that point anyways if you're, if you're thinking about doing the roof. But there are some recommendations for cleaning your roof. There are some other things besides just letting it run down the RV, which we're going to get into that. We're going to kind of explain all this, or I am. So when you're cleaning your roof, you don't want to just use any old cleaner. You want to be careful what you buy. Now, if you really don't want to buy a cleaner that's made for cleaning a rubber roof, that's fine. But make sure it's something safe for the roof, like maybe Dawn dishwashing soap. I'm not recommending that. I'm just suggesting that if you don't want to buy something that's made for doing it, use something like that. It's a pretty safe product. But there's benefits of using a cleaner that's made for rubber roofs. They're going to go in and actually clean it in a different way because it's designed to clean the rubber roof. Dawn isn't. It's designed to clean dishes, although it'll clean the roof, but it's not going to be the same as a cleaner made for it. And you want to make sure that the cleaner that you use does not have any petroleum dill sticks in it or citric that can bubble the roof. It can change the shape of it, make it swell. It might not ruin it, but it can cause problems. So please be careful what you buy. Buy something designed for rubber roofs. And the cleaners just clean better. You know, they really do. They loosen the dirt in a different fashion than like Dawn will or other cleaners. And you know what you're using is safe and it's been tested and it's proven to work on rubber roofs. So you want to use a cleaner like that, something for the roof. And then we're talking about the overall cleaning. You know, we're not talking about stains yet or little, little spots and so forth for the entire rubber roof. Now, when you're using a cleaner and it doesn't matter what it is really, whether it's Dawn or something designed for it, but more so with a cleaner that's designed for your rubber roof. You want to be careful about it running down the side as you're rinsing off the side of the RV or as you're, you know, getting into the scrubbing process because it can remove the paint or not the paint, excuse me. It can remove the wax, you know, stuff's going to be running down. It can leave streaks, especially on trailers that don't have paint, you know, ones that just have the gel coat, you know, it can leave streaks on the side. If it splashes on an awning that's out, it can stain the awning. If you have window covers, take them off. Whether you cover the side of the RV or not, you know what I do when I wash my trailer, I just constantly am hosing down the side, wherever I'm working at and make sure it stays wet. And that way, anything that comes down the side or splashes, it doesn't cause a problem. And I do my roof and then I wash the trailer all at the same time. I get off the roof and then start on the sides. But I, while I'm on the roof, I keep both sides front and rear wet. It eliminates problems. Now, another solution to that would be to get plastic and mask off the side of the RV with the plastic, you know, you'd want to go from the roof to the ground. You'd probably still want to take window covers off, bring awnings in and so forth. And that's a little more work, but in the long run, if you don't want to wash the RV at the same time or risk having problems, then that's a pretty safe way to go. If you can't mask it off, then just do it the other way. You could even have someone on the ground just hosing off the side of the RV so you can focus on the roof and, and getting it clean. Now, rubber roofs sometimes get tough stains. You know, they, they might come from mold and mildew. It might be from tree sap. It might be from berries of some sort. Now, keep in mind, a stain is just that. It's a stain. It's not going to ruin the roof. You know, you can 
clean them or not clean them. My take on it is who cares? You can't see it unless you're selling it and you want it to look real nice or you just kind of worried about it. It's going to bother you. If that's the case, you can use something like Tylex or a cleaner like that. You know, there's a lot of cleaners now that have bleach in them. And so you can use those. And what you do is work on those stains before you do the overall roof cleaning. So you do, you know, spot work on the stains. So you can spray the Tylex on the stain, scrub it down, you know, get it to a point where it looks pretty good. Then you can, you know, wipe the excess Tylex off. You don't want to leave it on there. And then again, do this before you wash the roof. And that way, when you wash the entire roof, it's going to wash off any excess Tylex or bleach or whatever product you use like that. But you don't want to go crazy with these cleaners. You know, you don't want to be up there scrubbing a stain so much that you actually start ruining the roof. Be realistic in your goals of how, how clean it should be. Like I said, it's on the roof. No one can see it. And even if you're selling your roof, if you present them information like what Dicor has on their website that talks about stains, they'll understand, okay, this isn't a make or break part of the deal. The stain isn't going to ruin the roof. In fact, you're the one that can ruin the roof if you try to get that stain out, try to get it to perfection. So be careful. And also, um, you know, tree sap is another problem. You, you park underneath a tree, you can get sap on it. It's, it happens. So the best thing to do, if you can, avoid parking underneath trees, you know, where sap is going to drip. But if you can't do that, then just be aware that you might have some extra work to do when it comes time to clean the roof. Now, one of the tips that's on Dicor's website is putting an ice cube on top of the sap and let it sit there, basically freezing it. And the theory is then you can just peel it off. Well, that might not work every time. So you can also use, and this comes with great caution. So think about this before you do it. Maybe try some more mild approaches. But again, you don't want to use every chemical in the cabinet or the garage trying to get some sap off. So if the ice method doesn't work, you can use mineral spirits. But you need to be extremely careful. Do not pour them onto the rubber roof itself. It can damage the roof. It might not damage to the point it needs to be repaired or replaced, but why take the chance? So you would put it on a towel or a rag and, you know, scrub the rubber roof basically or the stain with that towel or rag. And then, of, of course, you're going to want to clean that off afterwards when you're done. You're going to want to put a cleaner on there and get as much of it off as you possibly can. But you don't want to go crazy with that. That's kind of a last-ditch effort because, like I said, it can ruin the roof maybe not ruin it where you have to place but it can you know it can start to swell and then it might even deteriorate or discolor sooner or maybe then depending on how much you use so my take on it is don't get too carried away with stains you know let them ride it's not the end of the world and as far as cleaning your roof when you're up on top you know it's to, best to have kind of a technique you know, don't just start mopping here and there and scrubbing and kind of going in circles and so forth. You know, what I found works for me, and also this is what Dicor recommends. I don't know if I do it exactly like them. They say a three-by-three three area, a square. You know, I kind of do the same thing, except a little bit bigger, but I do the width of the RV. They recommend doing, you know, three-by-three three on the right side, then do a three-by-three three on the left, and then move forward, do a three-by-three, three, then move back or move to the side. And I'll have that posted on our website, a PDF showing all that. You want to find a method so you're kind of doing it in an organized fashion. Then after you clean a section or two, you know, it's best to hose it off and not let the, any of the cleaners dry on the roof. Sometimes it's really hard to do that depending on where you're at. But that kind of keeps the water moving, keeps things, you know, the sides wet. You're kind of working in a, 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 a pattern from the rear towards the front or the front towards the rear, ever how you want to do it. Best is to work farthest point from the ladder and work your way back to the ladder but just keep a, a method of doing it and also black streaks are another problem now rubber roofs do not create black streaks things that land on rubber roofs might create black streaks like pollutants that are in the air mold mildew things like that but the rubber roof itself does not create them so what happens is you get stuff you know pollutants and things that are on the roof and maybe when it rains or even after you wash it if you're not careful you might get black streaks down the side of the RV. You know, it's a normal thing, but don't panic. It's easy to clean. I mean, sometimes there's white streaks from oxidation on certain types of RVs and, you know, get mixed in with dirt and it leaves a streak down the side. You know, typically the white streaks wash off and black streaks come off with black streak remover. And sometimes, you know, the black streaks come from sealants and also bare aluminum. Sometimes RVs have 
you know, aluminum trim or awning rail that hasn't been powder coated. And sometimes that'll create a black streak. But nonetheless, if you stay on top of it and don't let them just continue to get worse and worse and worse, they'll come off and everything will be good. So use a black streak remover. There's plenty of them out on the market. And it's the same with the rubber roof cleaners. There's plenty of rubber roof cleaners out on the market. Obviously, Dicor has theirs, but there's other ones made by Protectol and other companies. The main thing is using a product that's designed for the application. Whether it's black streaks or cleaning the roof, use something that's designed for it and you'll have much better results. And, you know, for preventing black streaks, just clean your roof more often. You know, maybe you'll have to clean it five times a year if it's a, a problem. So just stay on top of that. It's not a big deal. You know, getting rid of black streaks and actually the whole process. It sounds like a lot of work, but you have an RV, you have an investment. So you're actually just spending some time with your investment. If you had a boat, you'd be doing other things to maintain it. You maintain things in your home. So just look at it as you're taking care of something. At the end of the day, the results will be good. You'll be proud of what you've done. You accomplish something. And by doing it yourself, you probably saved a whole lot of money. So think of it that way. You're saving some cash so you can afford to go on your next RV trip sooner or buy a new accessory for it, whatever it might be. So just look at it as something positive. Give you something to do. Maybe have your kids help you, a friend help you, your wife help you, your spouse help you, whatever it is. Get a couple people involved. Get it done sooner. So I want to thank you for listening to this episode, episode number 17 at Radio Arizona RV. And you can find us on the web at www.radioarizonarv.com. You can call me, Eric Stark, at 800-789-5588 during our regular business hours, Monday through Friday, usually 9 to 4. Thank you.